Hi there and welcome to Fluffy Jellyfish. Today's adventure is all thanks to Stuart, who gave me an amazing afternoon tea experience at Edinburgh Zoo. This was a little treat to cheer me up from the weirdness of 2020. It was really nice to be able to get out into the real world and actually go on a zoo adventure again, even if it was socially distanced. I hope you enjoy coming on this adventure with me. The afternoon tea itself was exquisite. We were served my favourite tea alongside sandwiches, cakes and scones. The staff were also brilliant at handling dietary requirement requests. I don't really like drawing attention to myself in public settings and asking for something off menu is one of those weird social situations that gives me anxiety. But in this case, veganism was very much on their menu and I was fully catered for. The afternoon tea was held inside the manor house and I was excited to take a peek inside as it always intrigued me on my previous visits. The dark wooden carvings around the house were stunning and I enjoyed the animal themes that they depicted, especially the beautiful winged dragons that stood proudly guarding the grand staircase. I was a little disappointed by some of the soft furnishings and the decorative elements inside. The tables and chairs that we were sat at felt like leftovers from an office party, and the wallpaper was cheap and did not suit the rest of the interior. It was weird. I feel like the insides need a bit of a makeover and some help into creating an atmosphere and design that's more in keeping with the opulent vibe of the original ornate wood carvings and the grandiose exterior. I mean, I was sitting underneath a framed portrait of the Queen after all. Edinburgh Zoo has always held a special place in my heart. I've visited it many times over the years of growing up in Edinburgh and it will always be my firm favourite. The zoo is owned by the Royal Zoological Society of Scotland, which was set up in 1909 and the zoo itself opened in 1913. It's described on the website as being set in 82 acres of sloping parkland, which I find funny as anybody that has been to Edinburgh Zoo will know that it's set on a massive hill, which is a bit of a pain to climb and yeah, it leaves you really tired by the time you've got to the top. Luckily, however, they do have a little train that folks with mobility issues and children and whatnot can ride to the top and then you can walk down, which is much, much easier. It's just outside the city centre and still in a fairly busy part of Edinburgh, so it's not a massive zoo but you can still experience over a thousand rare and endangered animals. As their website says, you can experience a busy programme of educational events and activities ranging from keeper talks through to hands-on animal encounters, and a wide range of eating experiences, several play areas and a fantastic gift shop. <laughs> All the things that we would enjoy. But of course, at the moment, due to the pandemic, a few of their encounters and some of the exhibits inside the zoo are not open. But I'll drop a link to their website in the description below and you can check that out before you head off to the zoo. Oh no, going. Oh, that was rude. Edinburgh Zoo's mission statement is connecting people with nature, safeguarding species from extinction. And I think about that a lot when I visited other zoos and nature centres. It is the core sentiment of why I think zoos are important, and Edinburgh Zoo very much lives up to this statement. And alongside the Highland Wildlife Park, which is owned by the Royal Zoological Society of Scotland and basically Edinburgh Zoo's sister zoo, and it's very much on my wish list of places I want to visit. They're both involved in an extensive range of conservation projects, as well as providing education opportunities within the zoo. They work on way too many conservation projects for me to talk about them all, so I'll briefly mention a couple that intrigued me, and I'll drop a link to their website in the description below so you can check out more of their conservation projects. Perhaps their most famous project is the giant pandas. In 2011, Tian Tian and Yang Guan arrived at Edinburgh Zoo, and while unsuccessful in their attempts to mate the pair so far, Edinburgh Zoo has contributed to panda research worldwide. Big, fluffy, cute animals like the giant panda quite often get all the headlines and news coverage, so it's important for me to talk about the lesser known conservation efforts of Edinburgh Zoo. In particular, helping to prevent the extinction of the Partula snail. 77 species of Partula snail became extinct following a failed attempt at biological control. The rosy wolf snail was introduced to the Pacific region where they're from to control numbers of another non-native species, the giant African lamb snail. However, the rosy wolf snail started predating the native Partula snail species instead. 
In 2010, Edinburgh Zoo was entrusted with the very last captive individual of the Partula tenata simulans subspecies. I'm sorry if I butchered the pronunciation of that. And in 2018, they hit the impressive milestone of over 10,000 snails successfully bred for release. These two stories highlight a small segment of the essential work Edinburgh Zoo is doing for conservation, and in my opinion, just another reason for you to add the zoo to your visit list. Yeah. Say little, I mean, they're still birds. But... Yeah, I know, they're only like, on their back, they're meat at all, but if they stand up, they're probably more like halfway towards human height. Well, See, over. now, that, a half and could while ride a sunbear into back. I'm not riding all of the animals into battle. He heard that, he's offended. He's not offended, he's a fierce, fierce creature. He's strong and powerful, or she is. I think that's a boy, because I'm pretty sure it has some bollocks. He is a strong and powerful beast. You don't need no man to ride him. No. Well, we could homebrew a bear person, character, race. No, no, a very not, nice view of your bottom, mate. We're not being furries and making all the furry races. But they're so the, already apparently doing that. But they're the best. Oh, you're having a nap. Oh, it's so cute. Little face. This was not my first trip to Edinburgh Zoo, and it certainly won't be my last. I was impressed with the social distancing and COVID safety measures that have been put in place. It was a miserable rainy day that we visited on, but the zoo was surprisingly quiet. At times we felt like we were the only two visitors in the whole place. While it was nice to feel like we had the zoo to ourselves, it did make me worry about the future of Edinburgh Zoo. Establishments like this are struggling at the moment, so I would like to urge you to help in any way that you can. Either by visiting Edinburgh Zoo or donating money if you're able. And you can also check out my post all about the other ways you can help your local zoo or nature centre during the pandemic, which I'll link in the description below. Wee little tiny one. Oh, that one's got a bit dead something. Or is it just leaves? I don't know, he's definitely got something. <laughs> is it a squirrel? Oh. Oh, mate. <laughs> Bro, you're not good at lining. He's only little. He's not little. Well, little. he's only a baby. I wonder what he's eating. He's probably got a bone of some kind. Still want a bit of meat on it. Do you think he caught a squirrel? Maybe. You seen the mushrooms under that tree over there? Oh yeah, they're the big orange. Big stretch. Wow. Look how that's the first response to any animal doing that. Oh, no. Even like You've got to a, say it. a lion or it's, a tiger. It's the rules. You just go oh, a big stretch like it's your cat at home waking up from a nap. Your fantastic face. Ah, oh, big stretch. No. It's funny how many mannerisms though that these display that your house cat at home does as well. Oh, he's having a big, big poo. Well, I'm not filming him. But for today, thank you so much for coming on this adventure with me, and I do hope to see you again in the future. If you want to see more awesome animal content from me, do hit the subscribe button as I'll be uploading a lot more videos soon, especially in 2021, <laughs> as I really hope to make that the year of Fluffy Jellyfish. I'm so excited to get started on my regular vlogging schedule. So yeah, do hit that subscribe button if you want to come on this journey with me. But that's all from me for today, and I'll see you in my next video. Bye!